Hey, welcome to Uncommon Goods, episode 34, Yen for America. I'm Lars, your host, uh, coming to you from the top of Mount Olympus, San Francisco, for now. Big changes afoot. So normally I prefer to highlight like mom and pop American businesses, you know, grassroots, um, nothing big. But, you know, if the news dictated, I'm happy to share stuff from like big corporate and corporations. And, you know, why do I prefer small businesses? Well, it's a lot easier to learn how they directly impact lives, uh, be it their families, the people they partner with, they employ, et cetera, you know, nor do they get all the sort of tax breaks that the big corporations get. Uh, and they really understand the difficulties of a highly regulated business environment. Uh, trust me, like go talk to the guy that owns the cigar shop. He, he could run the country better than uh, uh, what's his name. So Yen for America. Yeah, I'm thinking Japan. Right, Japan, America. Yes, yeah. I'm talking about the Japanese America, uh, Japanese company Panasonic. They are investing in a Kansas City EV battery plant. Uh, what does EV mean? It means electric vehicle. This is from an Auto Week article. Kansas City lands Panasonic's second huge U.S. EV battery factory. And before I get into the story, uh, what does yen mean? What do I mean? Yen for America. And, you know, for years I've heard the word yen used in several different ways. Uh, first of all, you know, yen is the basic monetary unit of Japan. It's their dollar, you know, so to speak. But I've heard the yen, the word yen used in like a different context. And, you know, not that often, but uh, it means like a longing or a yearning. And oddly enough, it's the Chinese origin, yan, which is uh, opium addictions or craving for opium is yan. So it was kind of weird growing up. You hear yen, you know, used both ways, you know, but Japanese money and yearning. People would say things like, I've got a yen for a good steak. So I guess that makes sense. You know, uh, I've yearned and longed for money. So take that. So, oh, and, you know, the idea of a Japanese company investing in an American plant reminds me of this movie I saw back in the day called Gung Ho with Michael Keaton. Yes. Uh, it even had Getty Watanabe. He's the uh, most famous for playing Long Duck Dong and 16 Candles. And I think in hindsight, you know, that role was considered a little bit exploitative or, you know, racist or uh, demeaning, but, you know, it was very memorable. Um, and then um, Mimi Rogers, who was an epic babe back in the day, she was married to Tom Cruise for a while, but a uh, great actress. So Gung Ho, back to the movie, came out in 1986. It was about a Japanese car company that invest in an autom automobile plant that had shut down. And it deals with, you can imagine it's eighties. It deals with all the cultural differences and clashes. And back then there was a little bit of a anti-Japanese sentiment. You know, they were, they were, you know, buying all our American companies. Uh, you know, they were putting us out of business. Uh, of course the movie, it dealt with a lot of stereotypes, but I was really hard pressed to find anything, you know, offensive or problematic or, or gross or whatever, you know, the insufferable woke people would say. So, in the interest of researching this episode, you know, I hadn't seen Gung Ho since I saw it in the theaters back in 86. So I watched it again. And yes, it was a great movie, you know, albeit a little bit cliched and predictable. But well, Michael Keaton is incredibly charismatic. I mean, he was on top of his game and it reminded me of why he had such a great run in the 80s. And now he's even made a bit of a comeback. So yeah, Gung Ho, a quintessential Michael Keaton performance. And then, of course, you look up the actors who played the Japanese businessmen from Japan. You know, they're all Americans putting on accents. Um, that's how we did it back in the day. You know, that's how it was done. Um, you know, I thought maybe we should have asked, uh, you know, Sho Kuzugi, you know, my favorite ninja movie star to be in it. But, you know, who knows how well he'd do like a heartfelt underdog culture clashing comedy drama. Who knows? But check it out. Gung Ho. 1986. What a great year. Oh, speaking of, you know, movies, you know, Netflix is having tons of problems. The subscribers are dropping. Well, guess what? Gung Ho is not available on Netflix. That's the problem. Start putting on great movies like that again. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Let's get back to the news at hand. Panasonic is a giant Japanese electronics conglomerate. So they're dropping $4 billion on a lithium ion battery plant in the Kansas City, Kansas City area, four billion, and it's going to lead to four thousand jobs. Now, don't get me wrong; I am absolutely not a fan of electric vehicles. 
the idea that they're environmentally friendly is completely false. The most environmentally friendly car is a used one. So do you even do I even want to get into the resource intensive process of procuring the raw materials to build these EV cars? They are totally destructive to the environment. But you know what? So was listening to any woke progressive talk. So there's that. But all kidding aside, I am a fan of investing in America and creating jobs here on our shores, within our borders. Now, a simple-minded person might think, hey, it's only 4,000 jobs, but that's 4,000 people earning money, learning skills, investing, buying homes, supporting families, living their dreams, right? And if you're familiar with the economic principle of spillover benefits, 4,000 jobs that you know pay probably pretty decent is a plus for any area. These people are spending money. Again, they're buying houses, they're supporting other local businesses. They need goods and services, et cetera. So, um, you know, I thought about, it, you know, why would Panasonic want to invest in America? You know, they're Japanese, right? You know, <laughs> didn't Japan want to invade us a few years ago? Okay. All kidding aside, but they probably thought, you know, behind every blade of grass is an American willing to work, right? And But as all spokespeople do, they fluffed up their language. Quote, Panasonic said it chose Kansas City for its skilled workforce, reliable infrastructure, and central location in North America. We appreciate Kansas's dedication to sustainability, which is really not with these electric vehicles. The state's commitment to and growth in clean and renewable energy aligns with our dedication in this space. End quote. So back on July 13th of this year, 2022, Panasonic announced plans to invest the factory in DeSoto, Kansas. Uh, again, it's a $4 billion investment with those aforementioned 4,000 jobs. Of course, I predict real estate prices will go up in the area. Why? Why do I think so? Well, this is the second American EV battery plant that Panasonic has invested in. The first one is in Sparks, Nevada, and there's been quite an uptick in home values in the past few years. And the the battery plant is one of those reasons, which of course reminds me of this bit. Reno so close to hell, you can see sparks. All right. So buy those houses now in DeSoto, Kansas, as the plant won't open for another two years. Two years? Yes, these things take time. And as much as I want every US company that's outsourced to China to rip out their production over there and bring it back home in the US, it's not that easy. Once you've gone, it's really hard to get back. It's like a reverse Hotel California. You know, once you check out, you can't come back. Man, come on. I had a rough night and I hate the fucking Eagles. So why did they build a second U.S. battery plant here in the U.S.? That's a redundant. But, you know, so despite, again, the inconvenience and totally misguided intent for environmentally friendly cars, Demand for electric vehicles is surging. EVs, again, stands for electric cars. And hey, do you know, like people, sorry, I'm getting off subject a little bit, but people that are into EVs and they talk about them, they refer to normal cars as ICE cars, I-C-E. So I'm all, what are you talking about? What's an ICE car? If there's a car that runs off of ICE, I'm all there. What are you talking about? And they say, oh, oh, that means internal combustion engine. I'm like, why can't you just F and say gas cars, ice cars, gas cars? Anyway, <sighs> obviously I have strong feelings about EVs. So EVs are growing in production and demand. People you know, can't get enough of them. So quote from the Auto Week article, in the second quarter reports Cox Automotive, sales of battery EVs in the US climbed to 196,788 a new high and up 13% from the first quarter. In the same period, EV sales were 5.6% of the total market, up from 5.3% in the first quarter. Going back a year to Q2 2021, that's you know a year ago, EVs only had a 2.7% share of the market, end quote. And of course, when you think of EVs, most people think of Tesla, who will likely be their biggest customer. Um, and earlier, when I mentioned like the spillover benefits uh, of this, uh, check out this quote from uh, um, Kansas, Kansas's Lieutenant Governor 
Um, David Toland, he told Auto Week that in addition to the 4,000 jobs, the factory would also bring in another 4,000 via suppliers and 16,500 temporary construction jobs. Now, that sounds really great if you can trust the numbers from a politician. I suspect they fluffed up the numbers, you know, best case scenario, uh, you know, just a little bit, but I'm not going to dig into it and argue about it. You know, gee, do you want zero jobs or, you know, 16,200 instead of 16,500 temporary construction jobs, you know? So more jobs, more production in America, even if I can't stand the product or the misguided purpose behind it, well, I'm free not to buy it, but it seems like everyone else will. So. What's the real story, though? Is Panasonic truly a believer in an American-made product in our workforce? Sure, you know, they are, but Kansas City rolled out a $1 billion red carpet. Quote, sorry, I lost my place here. Quote, Kansas Governor Laura Kelly approved a package of incentives worth as much as $1 billion earlier in 2022. According to Reuters, the Kansas Department of Commerce said the state would reimburse Panasonic with $829 million in subsidies after investment and hiring was completed. Kansas is estimating $2.5 million in economic activity per year from the plant and related activities, end quote. So, I don't know, we gave them a billion for $2.5 million in economic activity per year. So, maybe we didn't win the war. I'm kidding, but I dislike intensely these government giveaways to corporations. What are the governments giving to small businesses to succeed? How are they helping them out? Will they give them tax breaks that equal 20 or 30, 40 times their economic impact? Not likely, but that's fair to me. They should do something like that. So I think somebody's pockets were probably lined, uh, maybe indirectly somehow, but Maybe for me, it's wishful thinking that a large business would just invest simply in an area based on the demographics, meaning the workforce, the people, the skill set, and like the geographical advantage. Kansas is in the middle of the country and it's, you know, would make sense. But again, it's like that theme show from that 80 show. It's that theme song from the 80 show, The Facts of Life. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both. And there you have the facts of life, the facts of life. There you go. You know, we're taking the good and the bad. So which reminds me uh, of the show, The Facts of Life. Uh, If you're my age, who did you have a crush on from that show? You know, my buddies and I were talking about it the other day. I know. Um, They all like Joe, who was played by the legendary Nancy McKeon. And Joe was like the motorcycle riding tomboy, you know, bad, the bad girl. You know, she had a rough and tough exterior, but like inside, she had a little bit of a heart of gold, you know, if you could get in there. But personally, myself, I had it for Lisa Welchel's Blair, who was like the rich, glamorous, preppy girl, you know, probably high maintenance, someone you probably, you know, in hindsight, you don't want to marry, Uh, you know, the show, she wore too much makeup, but again, she was an epic babe and uh, I still got a little bit of a crush on her. Uh, So the lesson here, the facts of life is a win, doesn't always have to be perfect. You know, I'm glad to see investment in American production of a growing business category, even from a foreign company, you know, even if I don't like it, I'll take it. I think those 4,000 people in DeSoto, Kansas are glad to take it. So yes, a yen for America is a good thing. Just don't get mad at me when you run out of battery power and I pass by you on the side of the road. So, uh, I wanted to highlight an uncommy good for this episode, not a sponsor, uh, I do a, like I am an affiliate, but it's Origin Maine. Um, they are based in Maine, and they sell apparel, uh, footwear, nutritional supplements. It's all really um, high quality goods. I've tried their protein shakes, uh, the protein powder that you make a shake or a drink out of. Very good. They have a variety of flavors. I think my favorite from Jocko Fuel was chocolate mint. It had that minty essence with the chocolate flavor and the, it sort of gave you a little, you know, mint, like it refreshes your palate and it's just, it's cooling. So when you're drinking protein powder, you never really have a cooling sensation. Well, this Jocko fuel protein powder had a very good cooling sensation. I loved it. So go check out origin Maine. There's a link 
in the show notes. Check it out. And again, you know, hit like, subscribe, email me at hello at Uncommon Goods. Give me your feedback. What do you think about Panasonic investing in America? Despite a billion dollar giveaway, I'm a little bit mixed, but again, jobs in America is a plus. Going on Kami is always a plus. Uh, Japan, I gladly partner with, with that country, any business from there here in America, their allies. So again, thanks for watching, listening. Hit like, subscribe, give it five stars on Apple Podcasts and a nice review. Uh, thanks again for listening or watching on YouTube.